All right, it's, I think we've got 201. Let's get started. Uh, Barb's going to okay. intro. All right. Well, good afternoon, you guys, and thank you for taking some time today to kind of join our Prosperity Partner team for kind of an informal informational update. Um, I know, I've, I'm sure a lot of you are doing, we're watching the news and we're hearing a lot of information on social media and out on the news, the impact of COVID-19 on the market. Um, I have a lot of questions and concerns. So today we just kind of want to first let you know that we're here for you. And second, uh, we want to provide some helpful information. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have met some of our Prosperity Partners team, but just in case, we've got Jeff Garrett on the phone, who's our Vice President of Prosperity Partners. We also have Hong Tran, who is one of our newer additions as a financial advisor, and Aaron Bishop is on the line as our assistant to the program. Uh, the team would kind of like to start by giving you a high-level perspective as it relates to the economy and investments, and then we'll kind of open up the floor for any questions from the group, and I know we had some questions that came through online. Um, just please keep in mind, I do ask that any questions about your individual portfolio, please um, keep those to a one-on-one -on -one phone call that you can have with Jeff or Hong. And um, if you need any information on how to get in touch with them, we're, we're here to give that to you. So without any further delay, uh, Jeff, if you kind of want to yeah. take the floor. Absolutely. Well, first and foremost, I hope um, everyone is healthy and close to home. Um, you know, over the last couple days, weeks, we've entered uncharted waters concerning the COVID-19 um, outbreak, and um, it appears that uncertainty will produce longer than many of us have hoped over the last few days. Um, our everyday lives has changed dramatically over the last few weeks, and as we work together to minimize the impact of the pandemic, we know these efforts are necessary, but they also um, have come at a cost for a lot of us. Our first priority has been to ensure the health and safety of our people here, and I believe that Prosperity Partner Team is well prepared to support and manage, the, this, manage everything through this health threat. Um, we're committed to ensuring that we maintain 100% business continuity. What does that mean? That means that we have our systems in place that if we are not able to come into the office, we'll still be able to serve you from home or from an outside location. And so um, we've got that set up and, and it's working. And so you, sh you should um, expect no disruption of service. Um, Hung's going to come in and kind of just start the talk about the economic side of things and what we're looking at right now. Yep, thanks, Jeff. Um, as Jeff mentioned in this call today, we want to help give some insight into the state of our economy and world markets. We know things are moving and changing quickly, and it's hard for, for most people to keep up. Um, well, global economic growth has been slowing. The U.S. economy is contracting, hopefully temporarily, and U.S. US stocks have entered a bear market. Big stock market moves, both up and down, has become the norm, and the yield on the 10-year Treasury note has fallen to an all-time low. This has made borrowing cheaper for a lot of people, but unfortunately has created a challenge for savers. During these extraordinary times, you're probably asking what's next and what to do. We want to let you know that despite increased uncertainty, we are encouraged by the proactive actions of global central governments and banks to support their economies and stock markets. In the U.S., the Federal Reserve lowered its policy rates by a full percentage point the first move this large since the savings and loan crisis, bringing the rate to a target range of 0% to a quarter percent. Now, the full impact of lower rates may have to wait until loan demand picks back up, but other Fed actions provide more immediate support to help financial markets continue to run smoothly, bolster short-term funding, and increase market liquidity. Yeah, and at the same time, the U.S. government... Um has been working for the last couple days to week to pass several measures to support the economy. And it's currently working on a major fiscal stimulus um, package um, of roughly just over a trillion dollars, one trillion dollars that um, they plan on rolling out. Now the discussions are still being um, taking place, but some of the provisions are possibly to include paid sick leave for companies, um, expanded medical testing, unemployment insurance benefits, um, direct financial support for consumers and release 
relief for some of the most heavily impacted industries. Right. It can be difficult to keep looking forward with so much uncertainty and so many unanswered questions we all have right now. But for long-term investors, it's also important to maintain a clear vision of your financial goals and your plan for getting there. Market swings like we're experiencing now may provide some opportunity for certain investors. As the recession is increasingly priced into the market, stock market valuations relative to their earnings power and to bond yields have become more attractive. Current uncertainty means it is especially important to have a careful, measured approach to your investment plan. Right now, like I said, for some investors, there could be opportunities to take advantage of these potential opportunities. Yeah, and it's, it's likely we may see an economic rebound later this year and into 2020 as the outbreak is contained, as we understand what the outbreak is, what COVID-19 really is. Um, there's a lot of questions around that. So the goal um, would be to, you know, reopen businesses and, and look at the fiscal and monetary policies and, and see how they're going to support um, an, ex, an expanding economy. Now, the U.S. economy and corporate America have steered their way through many wars, cold wars, financial crises, and political events. Through even the most challenging times, markets have found their way back to normalcy. Um, we've seen, all seen it time and time again, and as investors have been able to look into the future, there's no reason to believe that this time will be any different. Now, when it comes to finances, one of the questions we're asking ourselves is this, am I going to be okay? Being okay is different for everyone, but if you don't have clarity or confidence in your current situation, please call us. That's what we're here for. Um, Ron had made the comment that, you know, <laughs> when am I going to be able to retire and, you know, <laughs> or am I going to have to work for X number of years to achieve that? And so we want to open up the line now and um, for some questions that you all might have. Um, because I know there's a lot of uncertainty um, for each of you. And um, so if any of you guys have any, um, you know, open-ended questions for us to answer, we'd love to have them. I have one. I'm not sure if you can answer it, but just a curiosity question about mortgage rates. Uh, interest rates, do we see that they might go down or stay about the same, or do we don't? Well, that's a that's a really good question. Um, it's kind of unknown at this time, because when we see the Fed rate drop like they did um, to zero um, or even a quarter point that they just recently did, that doesn't necessarily have an effect on the long-term rates like the 10-year treasury that most mortgages are tied to. Um, but just last night, um, we see that the 10-year mortgage is at an all-time low. So there is potential that the, um, you know, the um, shorter-term home rates, like the 10-year rate, a 15-year rate, maybe a 20-year rate, will be coming down. But the longer-term rates, like the 30-year, the um, may stay in that 3 to 3.5% zone but we are starting to see that the shorter term rates um, are starting to creep down a little bit. But that's a good question. Any other questions for us? Yeah. I, uh, yeah. So with, with the market the way it is, any recommendations for long-term changes or ride the storm? Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> You know, if you if you look at any of the charts, you know the S and P 500, the the Nasdaq, the Dow charts right now, this this has been the fastest dropping market in record. The the Great Depression drop wasn't this steep and as sudden, and so um, that's a really good an uh, question, Ron. Um, it's it's it is my hopes that we've found bottom or we're get, getting close to it, and so. Um, for, you know, for this drop to occur over a three-week period is unprecedented. Um, early on, you know, we saw one week of drop, and I said, okay, we're, we're down, you know, 7, 8, some were down 10%. Um, second week started to pick up, 
you know, the change in oil prices kind of added fuel to the fire. Um, and then all of a sudden last week it just took off on us and um, kind of reminded me of a, you know, a forest fire or you know, out in California when the winds kick up. There's no way of getting out from in front of it. Um, and so we've a lot of us have ridden it right down to where it is today. Um, and I'm hoping with the stimulus packages that are coming out, that is going to help give support to the various industries that have been most affected and to give stability to them and then to allow for their their industries to recover much faster than if the stimulus packages weren't there. Um, so to answer your question is I think it's probably best to um, stay where we're at simply because, you know, today may be the first day of the, of the recovery. We just don't know. Um, so I don't know if that's a non-answer and answer, but um, <laughs> um, that's kind of where, you know, how I'm looking at it. It just happened so fast and so quick. It, didn't, it really didn't give opportunity to, to sit back and ponder what's really going on. It just happened. Um, any other questions? Jeff, can you hear me? I can. Um, have you done anything differently in the last three weeks to combat this? You know, for it, it's really been a case-by-case -case basis. You know, so much of investing is emotion. And I, I did have certain clients contact me and at some point asked me to get me out of the market. I'm not sleeping at night. This is just tearing at me. And so I, you know, I obliged them in that. Um, but for the most part, um, we've remained the course, you know, through the portfolios that I manage and that we oversee, um, we buy high quality and I'm, you know, that high quality hasn't left. You know, we still we still have investments in high quality mutual funds and stocks, and so um, I'm confident that that quality will will you know will be the you know the start to bring the portfolios back into the green. Um, and so, just to add to what uh, I'm sorry, and just to add to what uh, Jeff's saying, if your portfolio made sense before the downturn. Um, it should still make sense for you now. This is not the time to change your approach. Again, what made sense before, you might want to stay the course because markets have gone down. So we want to, to ride that out. Um, I know this is impossible to predict with any accuracy, but what, what do you envision the recovery time to look at? Yeah, that's a that's a really good question, Patty. Um, you know, the if you study charts at all, like I do, um, if you take a look at them over a historical period of time, that normally when a when a market goes down quickly, it comes back quickly, or and um, and it's oftentimes called a V recovery. Um, we saw one of those happen um, late 2018. Um, through October, November, into December, we had a sharp downward push on the market. Um, I think the overall um, negative return during that time period, or the Dow went down, I'm um, right around 15%. Um, we saw that 15% recover within January, um, the turn of the first of the year in 2019. And so um, I think we've seen markets you know, over the last 10 years move a lot quicker, a lot quicker up and a lot quicker down as we've experienced. So my hopes, my guess is that actually we'll, be a, we'll see a faster recovery um, than what we saw in 2008 or, you know, the start of the recovery in two, March of 2009 um, for the, from the last recession. Hong, do you have anything to add to that? Um. No, not really. I mean, that's a, a good point. That, that is historically how it is. Now, it took a while for us to get out of 2008, at, but mostly I think it's because we took a while going down that steep, the 2008-2009 uh, 
um, Great Recession was the steepest recession we've had since the Depression. But like you said, generally, the faster we go down, the quicker we go back up. That's, that's the historical trend for this kind of movement. So we can only hope that this is how this will, this will be too, that we'll come out of this quickly, as quickly as we went into it. So my vision is the fact that uh, once America starts moving again, so will the markets and so will our financial health. Yeah, I completely agree with you, Ron. Um, we're just, you know, you look back at what's happened over the last couple of weeks and where we're at today and how our nation is um, being impacted. Um, I kind of look at it as if it's a kind of a world war occurrence. Um, not that there's fighting going on between countries, but that the whole globe is affected by this unseen virus and all the unknowns that have come with it. And that we're having to do um, dramatic things to combat it. And, um, and once that we get a handle on that and that the virus maybe even dissipates because of we're coming into the spring and summer and that it, you know, like most viruses just kind of dissipate that I agree with you, Ron, as soon as we're through over this hump that the economy will return and be strong again. Uh, any other questions? Hey Jeff, this is this is Barb. I had some questions yeah. come in earlier. Um, now okay. I heard both. I heard both of you talk about that R word, that sassy little recession word. Oh um, sure. What are you What are you thinking about the market, yeah. and are we going into a deep recession or? Well, it's it's almost too early to tell. Typically, a recession isn't called until we've had two consecutive quarters of um, decreased um, gross domestic product or GDP in our um, overall economy. Um, we're only at three weeks of this or a month of this. So technically, it's only after about six months that we've had a decrease in the economy that a recession is called. You know, this may be a redefining moment um, in in and how a recession is called by economists. And so it's almost too early to tell. I know when you turn on the, you know, the news or start reading stuff on the internet on the various financial web pages, there's a lot of analysts saying that yes, this is the start of a recession, but there's really not the data behind that to show it. They expect it to be because with companies, you know, shutting doors for a while, um, that means production's not happening, or when production doesn't happen, the economy slows. And that's, that's kind of, you know, one thing leads to another. It, so more than likely we'll go into a recession, but how deep and how long is yet to be, be determined. Thank you. And I know we had another question that came in, and I'm not sure who wants to grab this one, um, but somebody asked, and I keep listening to the news, and they're talking about a bear market, and they have that in quotes. Um, what does that actually mean versus a bull market? Hmm. Um, I, can, I can take that one. Um, to answer your question, Barb, a bull market is a market that is on the rise and is economically sound. So a bear market then is the opposite of that. It's a declining, receding market where stocks are declining in value. Um, generally, a stock market or our stock market is a bullish market. Most investors tend to be bullish because when you're investing, you're expecting that you know, your investment would increase in value over time. So the stock market as a whole um, generally trends upward. So in this particular market that we're experiencing now and that we have entered, because it has posted returns um, recently of more than um, a, a drop of more than 20%, it is now defined um, as a bear market, again, where investor sentiment is that stocks are declining in value. So that's the difference. Yeah. 
I think officially um, we entered the bull market or the bear market on um, March 9th when we saw that um, 3,000 point drop on the market. And they, they you know, raised the flag and said we're officially out of a bull market and officially into a bear market. Um, how long we we remain in a bear market is yet to be seen. So, yeah. So, how far do stocks have to climb before we're back in a bull market? Oh, that's a good question, Ron. Um, I don't know what the honestly what the technical rebound is. It doesn't mean the market needs to go up a twenty percent from the bottom to be considered a bear. I'll, I'll look into that and I'll let you know because um, we're going to send out a, a recap of today's um, um, phone call and um, I'll find the answer for that. I'm guessing it's 20% increase from the bottom um, just like a bear market is 20% 20, 20 decrease from the top. We are hopeful that this would be about a 15-month um, recovery, that in 12 to 15 months, hopefully, we'll be back on the rebound. It won't be quick, but in the scenario that we're in, um, I would say 12 to 15 months would be considered fairly quick. Wouldn't, do you think that... Um, with Europe suffering, too, do, do they need to make uh, a similar recovery in order for the market to pick up? Yeah, um, our economy is such a global economy these days that, um, you know, when one, one nation or um, area of our world is, is hurting, others hurt. And, um, yeah, it, it's going to take effort um, on part of of the EU, um, European Union, and and also um, England, to you know, see their economies pick up. But fortunately, the U.S. economy is the is the biggest and strongest economy. So oftentimes they're they're coattailing on what we're doing for success for growth, and so we're not so dependent on them on their recovery as they are dependent on us for our recovery. So how does China's recovery play into that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a really good question. That's a really good question. I'm, um, you know, it, it's really hard to tell. Um, I think there's kind of a, a wake up going on about how much um, strength and power the U.S. economy and industries have given China that, um, you know that this you know this whole virus originated within their boundaries. They were affected for a period of time, and that and now it's you know drifted over to us. They say they're recovering, that their industries and plants are coming up back up online, but if there's no one there you know to buy their products and services, um, then not sure what that means for them long term. Um, yeah, this is this is so new. And so different than anything in the past. Um, so it's it's really hard to tell what it's going to take for their economy to recover to then energize other economies around the around the globe. Uh, any other questions for us? Uh, this is Jeffy, go ahead. Oh, I just have one, Jeff. Um, so when when we start rebounding, um, should the strategy that this us, like the seniors who are retired, yeah. should their strategy change somewhat? I mean, the, given, you know, <laughs> we, we might not have yeah. as long for it to get back to normal. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's a, you know that should be a conversation that we have on one on one and kind of look at your holistic picture. Okay. Um, and you know, as the saying goes, you never put all your eggs in one basket. So so diversification of your 
portfolio and assets important is important no matter what chapter of life you're in. Uh-huh. Um, but I think that you know if you're you know if you're thinking well if we're in a recovering market perhaps I should be a little more aggressive and kind of get back what it was taken away um, a little bit faster. Um, you know that that'll really depend on your ability to take take on additional risk. Mm-hmm. Um, whenever you are looking for faster gains, you're also accepting you know greater risk. And so, um, yeah, so it's really going to be you know person by person, need by need, okay. um, to really okay. answer that one accurately for you. Thank you. Any other questions, thoughts? I just want to say thanks for bringing this together so that we have at least an opportunity to to hear and be as as, um, rest assured as we can be. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I've had a few sleepless nights over the last couple weeks. Um, You know, because you know, we're here at Prosperity Partners to be your partner in your financial lives. And and when things like that, things like what's in, in recent weeks um, happen, we take it very personally. Um, you know, we know we don't have any control over what's going on, um, but we also have a responsibility to you to try to give you our best understanding, our best knowledge, in wisdom on how to you know, fight through the the current battle but also find a way to find a way to recover so well um any other questions for us i know one of the things that um kind of you know we addressed in our opening remarks um but I haven't really had a question about it, is the whole oil price. Um, if you if you remember back a couple of weeks ago, it was on that Black Monday um, when the markets, you know, the Dow dropped over 3,000 points. Um, it was right after Saudi Arabia and the Russians decided to um, go on a, a price per barrel dropping um, venture. And um, over the weekend, previous weekend, not last weekend, one before, they agreed to drop, start dropping the price of oil. Um, so when markets opened up Monday morning, it was just a you know, red on the screen. It just dropped hard and fast. And, and people are trying to figure out why would they do this at this time. Um, not real sure what was behind it, but because of the slowing of the global economy, um, specifically um, China. China was the number one purchaser of Chinese and or of um, Saudi Arabian and Russian oil. Well, because China had been a couple of months into the coronavirus um, epidemic and their industry had slowed down to combat that, well, there's a, there's a glut of supply of oil um, on, on the marketplace. A lot of people don't realize that over the last three years, the U.S. Um, has become energy independent. What that means is we haven't purchased oil from anyone outside of the U.S. We haven't been purchasing oil from Saudi Arabia or Russians or um, Venezuela or any other um, producing nation. Uh, we've been able to, to handle our own needs internally. Well. That has come from the fact that, um, you know, several years ago, oil producers started to pull oil out of the shell rock that we have underneath us. Um, It's not easy oil to get to, but it's available oil. And so, you know, the popular term fracking came into play 10 years ago or so. And so that's how we've been able to get ourselves into oil independence is through different methods of um, getting oil out of the ground. And but to do that cost effectively, the price per barrel needs to be above thirty-five dollars a barrel. And the higher above thirty-five dollars a barrel, 
the more profit a, a company has in producing that type of oil. Well, so what's happened is because Russia and um, Saudi Arabia has pushed the price per barrel down well below $35 a barrel. If you look at the oil prices right now, it's $24 a barrel. Um, it has made the feasibility of U.S. oil producers of getting it out of shell rock not very cost effective. And so it's having damage to that industry locally. And so until the price per barrel goes up, um, it's not going to help out our 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 in-house oil producers and may when we may need to start buying from you know outside um, producers Saudi Arabia Venezuela Russia um, so that's kind of a you know it's just why they chose to do this at this time it's really kind of un unknowing but that's what's happened and so that's that's had a kind of a double whammy on on where the markets are at today because you know a lot of our industries are starting to slow production to you know people work from home closing factories to create social distancing well um, they're not using that much oil or natural gas to run their industry so we're going to have a, a oversupply of those types of um, resources so the whole economic you know 101 is you know, when supply is high and demand is low, prices come down. And so that's kind of what we're seeing in the oil industry. It's going to be great for our pocketbooks when pulling up to the pump and, and seeing $1.899 a gallon. And who doesn't like that? Or when we get a repricing on the natural gas that we're using at our home to, you know, to heat our home and heat our water, you know, who doesn't like that, um, those lower prices? Um, but from a healthy economy standpoint, it's almost too low um, for the economy and for some, some industries to, to survive low um, price per barrel um, numbers. Uh, that was fascinating. Oh. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. You're welcome. Well, our uh, any other questions? The, uh, the imprint of pollution is down across the world. It is. Yeah, that was the big thing a couple weeks ago when they, um, you probably saw the same image that China, their pollution had like was cutting by 75% um, over their, their continent, their country, um, because of shutting down the plant. So that was a, a strong positive of reducing emissions at least for a little while um, that was amazing to see that that image that map of the amount of pollution that is has been taken out of our current atmosphere so and dolphins have returned to venice canals yes yes <laughs> yeah well part of it. Any other questions, thoughts? Well, oh. okay. Well, um, I truly appreciate everybody taking time this afternoon to join us and just have a conversation about um, our world right now um, and how it financially is affecting us, but also affecting families, you know. It is my greatest hope that um, none of our families, loved ones, friends, family is affected personally by potentially um, infection from the from the virus. So my prayers go out for each and every one of you um, that your family stay protected during this time. And you know, as hard as it is to do, um, doing social distancing right now seems to be the you know the the greatest defense that we have against the uh, COVID-19 and and um, I think we've all kind of accepted that now that that's the route we need to go and we're all doing it um, the best that we can so thank you again for joining us today and like I said we'll um, put together a transcript of this or a recorded audio of this 
and get it out to each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right.